gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Welcome to WHW Monday. Tony Schiavone and Conrad Thompson. Jim Crockett for Starcade, 605 NWA, TV title, Cajun Omni, the Bunkhouse Stampede, Flair and Horseman, Garvin, Bogey, Magnum, Dusty, Express Tag Team, Turner, Bond, and Mid-South Joy World Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotion. Tony and Friends North, they win, look, Shivani's back again, World Title Split Off, Center Stage, Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro, New World Order, and The Crow, Thunder. Russo, Arquette, Champ, Vinny, Mac, Simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad. Not your classy podcast. Watch a long try not to laugh. Lowest rules can't pass. This wasn't the initial plan. Tom Zing's a good looking man. Quandike Bill, make a chair. Tommy, you come over here. What happened when? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring. And here's your co-host. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Well, I'm feeling a little under the weather. <clears throat> My voice is cracking. No, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's just been a rough couple of weeks. A lot going on. Kind of feeling under the weather. But by golly, I'm here doing it with you. How you feeling? Well, I'm feeling better than two is. What a yeah, weekend. Yes, you are. What a weekend. What a weekend. Absolutely. Well, you know, life goes on. You get another quarterback, you move on, you play another season down the road, things happen. Oh, by the way, do you know Georgia come to Tuscaloosa next year? I'm really excited about that. Will you still uh, be with the Bulldogs or are you a full blown Shivani by then? I don't know. I uh, I probably will still be with the with the Bulldogs by then. Football well, team for sure. I look forward to uh to seeing you there. Maybe we can uh, have a little fellowship before or after the game. I love fellowship. Fellowship is my favorite thing to do. One of my favorite things to do. All right. Here's the deal. We're watching clash of the champions. 13 Thanksgiving thunder. You some of my bitches and it went down on November 20th, 1990, 1990, very interesting time in WCW. This has a lot of stars and it also has some J Brones. We're going to have fun with all of it. Lots of you have been asking, are we still doing the Thanksgiving tradition? I'm doing a Starcade watch along. You bet your ass oh, we are. No, we're not. Why not? Oh, we are. I didn't know. We didn't do one last year. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. Ixnay dead. But anyway. No, we so, did a Starcade. Wouldn't we just aired it early or later or whatever? Oh, right, right, right. You're exactly right. So, okay. So we're doing we're, it okay. again next week. We're doing Starcade 84, which is one of our most requested shows. And I have a good authority that that pay-per-view is 11 hours long. Ugh. So here's what I suggest next week. I say we just we either do this in person together and drink, or we do it separately and drink. We need to break out some eggnog. We need some, some winter spirits, maybe some peppermint schnapps and whatnot. Maybe a little booze in our hot cocoa. Thanks. We just need to do this. Listen, if I'm going to have to watch wrestling from 1984, 11 and a half hours worth, I'm going to need to entertain myself somehow. Hanging out with me is not entertaining enough. Well, I mean, you, you were supposed to be at my house today and you, and I'm old. Uh. Well, let me tell you something, motherfucker. I've had a busy fucking week. It ain't busier than mine. No, no, I don't want to hear your shit, dude. And you would have had to, okay, but I would have had to travel three hours to your house. Yeah. You, it was your idea. I didn't invite you. You invited your fucking self. Do you not remember? Yeah, I remember. By the way, we should shout out everybody. Thank you for coming to see Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone live this past weekend at Zanies. I guess it wasn't this past weekend. It was right after AEW last Wednesday. It was a great time. And, uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it a little more as we get our show going. Tony, we got an hour and 54 minutes and 43 seconds to go in clash of the champions 13 by now. Hopefully you've fired it up on your WWE network, press mute. And, uh, Tony's going to give you a countdown when he says, play, we're going to have you press play and we're going to do a little watch along action. And we're going to try to occasionally 
give you a little time code reminder. Occasionally we'll do that. <clears throat> and, uh, well, you want to bring in Lois? I don't feel like bringing her in. Well, That's yeah, listen, I, I don't know that she can make her way up the steps with all that dog hair. It's, it's a fire hazard. I, I've had enough for her for a lifetime. I mean, for a week. Last, and, week, last and, week, it was the greatest thing that ever happened in your life. And it was so, you were so touched. You, you, you wept. And now we're back to normal. Fucker. I've had enough for a lifetime. Oh, well, she just walked behind me here. Ladies and gentlemen, Lois Shivani. Are you guys talking about me? I can't believe this. After all I've done for you, I mean, I flew to Baltimore for a happy fucking birthday. And this is what I get. Three, two, one, play. Yes, sir. How about it, baby? Boom! Elbow. Luger throwing punches that suck. Somebody's going to stab him one day. Oh, the black scorpion. The black scorpion. The black, I mean, run and uh, butch and they will push each other around here. Woo, 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 woo. Clash of the champions. Guess where we're coming from, Conrad? Thanksgiving Thunder. Guess where it's coming from? Probably somewhere in the South Carolina area. Oh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, How about it? No, wrong. It's Veterans Memorial Coliseum. How about that? Look at these two fuckwads. God, two of the best commentators of all time. Well, the one on the right is. No, listen. I know you weren't watching, but the one on the left got his got his uh, got his uh, lips around Vince's dick, so you can't consider him one. Boy, are you still in touch with with Paul? Because that feels like a very mean thing to say. No, I'm not in touch with him. I should be. Well, why would you say something like that? That's rude. I'm just. <laughs> Oh, it's like you've never said anything. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you know, we're in the Jacksonville Memorial Coliseum, a building that they are going to tear down. But sooner or later, I'm going to get to meet Tony Khan. Yes, and I'm not going to meet Tony Khan. What the hap- What the fuck happened to me? It's a shame because little baby Tony Khan is not there. He still lives in Illinois at this point. I know. Oh, and sorry. I was just trying to comment for the audience. My apologies. I just will only say things to you that are new information to you. So I don't get a smart ass fucking reply. Oh, wow. So yeah, let's, so let me get this right on the scorecard. What the fuck are we looking at here? This is the shit y'all did. What the fuck? What, what are you talking about? It's the fabulous free birds. And of course it's their buddy, little Jimmy. And does Rocky, it, does Rocky King have white face on here? Yes. Oh, um, and Michael Hayes has what in his mouth? I'm not going to say, cause he said something about Vince's penis earlier. That was hurtful. Okay. Oh, oh really? Yeah. You get upset when I talk about Vince's penis. Well, what did it ever do to you? Okay. Well, I don't know. Why are you taking up? By the way, I said little, little Jimmy. I was thinking of WWE's character. That's actually little Richard Marley. Oh man. Can you believe y'all did that to him? Uh, yeah, I can't because Rocky so much wanted to be a part of anything. He would have done anything at all. And everybody liked him. I, f- I feel like, uh, or <laughs> nothing a- on this age as well. Does it? <laughs> like, God, God damn. What the fuck? As much as I love old school WCW every now and again, you're like, fuck, how did we not know better? We have, we apparently didn't know better. We got a black dude in white face. Yeah. And then we got the wild out Southern boys out here with the rebel flags, which yeah. here's the deal. I get back then. That was a different thing. And it's funny. Cause you know, growing up in the South, man, I saw a lot of rebel flags my entire life. And a lot of that, and I'm not going to be funny was because they were Dukes of hazard fans. Oh, right. And it was just like, I don't know. It's, but now living in the South, fuck, you never see a Confederate flag or rebel flag. I mean, I can tell you the last one I saw in real life. Oh, I can tell you the last one I saw in real life. Where was that? I don't know if I told you the story, but my daughter went to my homestead where I grew up, my mom's house. Oh, yeah. The tenant to live in and have a fucking rebel flag out front. I said, fuck, what the fuck's going on? And also, I think if I'm right, you can go down Interstate 95 through Georgia, right between Savannah and the state line of Florida. And someone's got a gigantic rebel flag. They spent a lot of money putting up as if to say. Here it is. Fuck you. So that's, that's along the side of the interstate there. It's part of y'all state flag though. Is it not? 
No, it used to be. It's not anymore. I know the hate runs so deep over there. Y'all just make uh, it Would you stop it? What? Would you stop it? Would you st- there's only two things we hate. Florida Gators and Auburn Tigers. End of story. We love everything else. You love it when Alabama runs it up in you? Uh, uh, no, we oh, don't. Okay. Are we going to start talking about these matches? I'm just waiting on this- you. You know, you're the professional wrestling commentator. Uh, Jesus, because these matches, uh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going to have you shit on the wild eyed Southern boys. I know their jackets and their tights are, are, you know, not cool, but holy fuck. These are some good wrestlers. I was getting ready to say, I was getting ready to say that regardless of all the pomp and circumstance and bullshit that we've seen in the ring, we probably are in for a pretty good match here. Did you hear me say good wrestlings? I, that's my new thing. These are some good wrestlings. That's your new thing. Good I'm wrestling. I'm going to fucking make that. I'm going to get that over. How about that drop kick? That's Double drop kick, wrestling. you son of a bitch. Rock and roll. Live forever. Get a Woo. little Richard Marley out of here. Come on. Man, I, isn't it a shame how much talent the Armstrong family had? And I don't think they get their respect as a wrestling family. If I'm all of us, I mean, like if Bullet Bob was from fucking Calgary. People will be just whacking them off to this day. Oh yeah. But because he's from mobile, not so much. He's not from mobile. I was being a smart ass about the fact that he's from some podunk bullshit, Marietta, Georgia, who the shit lives in Marietta. I live in Marietta, Georgia. God damn it. So don't oh. fucking shit on the good guy. Down there. Look at that. Look at Steve Armstrong go, man. What if I don't say I did? Hey, so one thing about Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, here uh, we go. (laughs) No, no, I was, I was besides being home of the greatest football team in the NFL. Oh my God. No, one thing about it is it was at this time in WCW, our best town. No, it wasn't. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was one of our best towns. It right. always, it always drew well. well, always drew well. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fans in the crowd dressed up as empty chairs on this particular show. Well, I listen, there are less empty chairs here than in most, put it that <laughs> way. Okay. I love you. And you're just so willing to, okay. All right. But we <laughs> sucked here less. Well, that's true. This was not a good, I mean, I, I think you, you would agree that this was a great era for WCW. You love this time. You love 1990. Sure. You loved 89, oh, but fine. you loved 89 more than 90, but it was not a good year financially for this company. This was the tr- This, we were in the transition between Jim Crockett promotions and Jim motherfucking heard. And it wasn't a good time. I feel like we should mention that, um. The headline coming out of this show, just like 10 days later, only Anderson's fired. Yeah. Didn't take long, did it? And the replacements, who's going to take over as Booker since Ole's out? Jim Ross, Ric Flair, Tony Schiavone, and Kevin Sullivan. Yikes. The old booking committee begins. I'd love to hear what your ideas were in 1990. My idea was, my idea was, Hey, I got to go home and take a shit. You guys come up with something and I'll put it down on paper. for you. These fucking booking committees got nothing done, especially when Ric Flair was in it. Not a fucking thing. There were some suggestions in the torch as to what they might do next, including okay. interviewing Ken Mantell. There was a lot of support to hire Terry Funk as the booker and have Eddie Gilbert be his assistant co-booker where Uh Terry would work out of the office and Gilbert would handle the road duties. At the time though, Funk was on tour with his brother, Dory in Japan, working a bunch of tag shots. Bill Watts denied that he was interested. Jim Cornette said he's not coming back until the current management is gone. Right. And of course that leaves dusty roads. 
Who would become the booker after the first of the year? Did um did anybody play hokey pokey with WCW as much in the NWA as much as Dusty Rhodes? Uh no, you're you're right. Oh, DDT from Fantasia here. One, two, three, and there you go. Do 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 one two three. By the way, I love the shot from the ramp. I was so happy when when you guys brought the ramp back. We need Ryan to make us a shirt that says "I love ramp," sort of like on Ron Burgundy, where Steve Carroll's character says "I love lamp," because a lot of our listeners love the ramp. Really? Look at that, man! Wow, that is pretty. Kid, I thought that was the coolest shot ever, dude. So Michael Hayes was known as Fantasia at this time. So no, that's what uh, Dusty Rose called him. So I was trying to be cool. All right. Well, you are cool. They, it, and he was pretty cool too, with the exception of those yellow fucking motherfucking lips. What in the world was he doing? Those yellow fucking motherfucking lips. Yeah. All right. God awful. All right. You ready for an interview? Damn, that hair looking good. That is I like pretty, to say, I mean, you are looking pretty good right there. Like say hello to my good friend, the Khan's family. Oh, good geez. friends, shot and and then Tony Khan sure. standing over here to my left. Sure. There you go. We love it. Now let's bring up who we're gonna bring up. How about showing? All right, go ahead. You be Sting. Sting. Hey, you know I'm working with the cons right now, right here in this town of Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I am excited to be here because I hear they're passing out checks, and I got to buy a new boat, a goddamn Sea Ray, because I pulled out some red, white, and blue paint for Conrad Thompson. And woo! Stark asked for. You mean he actually paid you to do that shit? My God. Yeah, not only did he pay me, he paid me enough to get a new Sea Ray. Are you not listening, Tony Schiavone? I'm hopeful that if he brings me back next year, I'll get enough to cut off this rat tail. <laughs> well, uh, let me say that uh, you do look good here in green and black. And, and I do realize that. Uh, what, oh, come, what? come here now. Well, hang on now. I've got to tell everybody how they can talk to my friend Lex Luger. It's called Confessions of a Murderer tonight on the WCW Hotline. <laughs> Oh, you just heard the voice of the scorpion. The voice of the scorpion. Sting. Sting, walk around in the circle. You and everyone. Everybody stand up. Girl with nice long hair and big boobs. Look towards me. I was in the last Clash of the Champions. I'm going to be in another Clash of the Champions. I'm going to be here until they fire Ole Anderson at the end of the year. Yes, we've got Starcade coming up. I don't mean Starcast. I mean Starcade. All right, Sting, you heard of the Black Scorpion? We got to take a fucking break. Break. One, two. And don't forget oh. Thanksgiving Thunder. Talk to Lex Luger live tonight, 805 to 825 on the Wrestling Hotline at 1-900-909-9900. Kids, get your parents' permission or don't. All right. It's time for Nature Boy Buddy Landell. I, I never got it. I don't get it. Buddy Landell was a good worker, man. Should have never been on TV. Never? No. Nah, just, well, I mean, yeah. Enhancement talent, which I guess is the way you booked him. So it's fine. But he's a less talented George South. Wow. I disagree completely. Okay. Well, shit on George. He's listening, but Landell's dead, but continue. Not shitting on George. I thought our move was we shit on dead people. You shit on George by calling him a less talented George South. No, no, no. I'm saying on George. I didn't shit on George. You shit on George. I didn't shit on George. I said that Landell wasn't as good as George. Like Buddy I, Landell was one of had some of the most had. No, he didn't. Yes, he had more potential than anybody. Well, did he ever realize any of it? None. 
Okay. Then fuck him. It's like Matt Coon. He had potential once too. And then the world gave up on him. Like, what is he doing here? That could not look faker or more shitty. Besides he's, he's, we're like that. We're like the adult version of that little boy in six he's, sense. He's healing. That's what he's doing here. He's being a heel, breaking the eyes. And now he's going to get schoolboy. boy. I wish, One. I wish he would H E L H E A L my feed and just get the fuck off it. I'm not a Landell guy. Apparently not. I, I think we got that. Landell was the Baron Corbin of wrestling. No, no, that's not true. Corbin has heat. Does Corbin have heat? Oh, tons. Oh, with the fans or is there a difference? Anyway, I'm trying to make a point about the six cents kid. I see dead people because yeah. here on the show, we shit on dead people. That's what we do. There's I'm not teasing the file, the pile driver. Oh, back body drop, sunset flip. Nope. Punch him in his face meets. I love ramp. I love ramp. Another clothesline. Hmm. See, buddy could do some. All right. Buddy, you just not get out of his own way. That's all. I never did like the nature boy gimmick though. I mean, there was one nature boy, right? That's Buddy Rogers. That's Everybody right. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. By the way, the first match that we saw in the torch got two and a half stars. And nope. his high, that was out of five stars, right? The match was a good opener full of action. Eligante and Bobby Eaton were supposed to make this a six man tag, but Eligante missed his flight. I don't know how that's possible. Couldn't he have just held on to the top? One would think it's like when you bring home a Christmas tree, you just throw it on the top of the old SUV with it's going to put Eligante right on the top. Just hang on big man. Here's your sack of nuts. Misty's flight. Bobby, for some reason was forced to step down from the match by the official. The end came as Armstrong backdropped Garvin over the top rope onto the runway while little Richard trips mothers coming off the ropes, allowing haste the DDT him for a three count, two and a half stars. Mel, uh, by the way, so to say Meltzer, Wade Keller would describe your interview as saying a short and highly energetic interview without a screw up by sting. Yeah. Apparently he was not a big fan. Oh, sting was asked to do a lot. He was, he wasn't the greatest promo back then. This match here would be described as the best match of the night. According to Wayne Keller. Uh, and why is that? Maybe because Buddy Landell was pretty damn good. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Brian Pillman. You're right. You hear that, Brian Pillman Jr.? Tony Schiavone said, your dad ain't shit. You are. You know what? You are a one instigating motherfucker. What did I say that wasn't true? You're, you're an instigating motherfucker. I did not say anything bad about the good name of Brian Pillman. By the way, both these guys are dead. Okay. Is our referee dead? No, oh. I said both these guys. Did I say all three of them? I was asking a question. You know a what? Both means. Question. Yes, I do. You know what? Okay. Both you, means two. Gordon Soli didn't stand there, I see. Both means you've had two significant games against Alabama and you lost them both. Wow. Well, we still got our quarterback and we haven't lost LSU yet. So don't get me started, motherfucker. Wait, I'm sorry. Who'd you lose to? Because I see a one hanging around back there. Uh, we lost, uh, who was that? Nothing. I was drinking my coffee. That's what I thought. You lost to a sack of shit team. We lost to the number one team in the land with a, with a Jack leg quarterback. Jack leg quarterback. (laughs) Lane quarterback for Alabama. Jack leg. That'd be a great name. (laughs) That feels like an ABC sitcom. The main character. (laughs) Jack leg <laughs> Friday's at eight. <laughs> just have this and the main character be just big jerk off. <laughs> He'd probably look like buddy Landell. <laughs> just kidding. Buddy Landell's dead. Oh God. Well, they're, they're having a good match here. I mean, they, they really are. I mean, of there. course that Brian Pillman is a fucking man's man. This gets three and a quarter stars. Yeah, he is a man's man. I agree. But 
in 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 a little respect to Landell here, you, you got to have to have a good match. You got to have a good partner. No, you, you do. Know. Flair did that a lot. By the way, this match is being built as Flair's imitator versus Flair's old protege. Right. They wanted so much to have Flair and Landell do some stuff together, but Flair didn't really like Landell. Not necessarily because of the gimmick, but just he knew he wasn't money. Uh, there it is, big cross body. That's your finish. That was a hot spot, a major hot spot in 1990. Yeah, people loved it. Here it is again, Brian. Just so agile, ahead of his time. And not many people did that these days, uh, back in that day, but they do it now. That mullet, dude. That, Sexy. And Brian Jr. has kept that tradition alive, dude. He's got a mullet and a half, son. Yes, he does. My God, we still want to talk to Lex Luger. Absolutely. one 900 Kids, get your parents' approval or don't. But remember, it's $2 for the first minute, 45 cents for each additional minute, a minute, just like Francine's live stream. Wow. Whoa, man. Sting. Lex Luger, Rick Flair, spelled correctly, all part of Collision Course, Starcade 1990, coming to St. Louis, world title, Sting, Black Scorpion, facing off for the final time. Is it Al Perez? Is it Ric Flair? We go to Russia. We go to America. We go to Japan. We go to Canada. We go to wherever that flag was from. And, of course, there's Stan Hansen. We've already done a uh, collision course, haven't we? It's available in the archives right now at whwmonday.com. That's when they had the, uh, Pat O'Connor, uh, yeah. tournament. <laughs> Memorial tournament. What's wrong? Sunday, December 16th, live on pay-per-view. By the way, that was my dad's birthday. That's great. How old would my dad have been in 1990? Let's see. 32. He would have been 33. Yeah. 32. He'd have been 32. Ever tell you my big cat story? No. Well, this is a, a, a kind of a modern big cat story. You prefer uh, Mr. Hughes or big cat? I preferred uh, big cat. Yeah, brother. I'm big cat. That doesn't mean I got a big dick. That doesn't mean I'm a cat. That just called me big cat. My name is Curtis Hughes, and I'm coming at you with these sunglasses and this, I don't know what you call it, type top I got on. Uh, MLW. Oh, uh, you did tell us the story, but share it again. Yeah, I'll share it again. Uh, we brought up, uh, Rich Bokini and I brought up Curtis Hughes' name. And... I don't know why. Maybe there was somebody in the ring named Hughes. And we brought up Curtis Hughes' name and Fort Bauer and fucking full on Vince McMahon on us. Screaming in our headset. Don't you ever say the name of Curtis Hughes on this TV show again. Do you understand me? Never again. I think my favorite part of that is, do you understand me? Yeah. Motherfucker. Why? I'm thinking what? Why are you cussing court? Well, at that moment, I was really cussing him at that moment. A little rage flew into me that moment mm. because now this is one good thing that we do at AEW. They leave us alone. JR will tell you that on his podcast that when he and Excalibur and I do the commentary, there's nobody in our ear like Vince telling us what to say. And, and, and really the only reason Vince, you know, screams at the announcers is he wants to put himself over in front of the boys standing there at the gorilla position, but there's nobody screaming in our ears. Court never screamed in our ears. I think it's the wrong thing to do. Well, I know it's the wrong thing to do. Sometimes my opinions, I'm not so sure they're valid or not when I'm talking, but I know this opinion is valid. Leave your fucking announcers alone. 
Don't scream at them. Don't talk down to them. They're not going to do a good job if you do that. So when Court screamed at me that time about Curtis Hughes, I got really pissed off. And I almost, I almost dropped my headset and walked in the truck and said, you ever scream at me like that again, I'm fucking walking. But I didn't. I settled down. The rage filled up in me. I settled down. I did my job. And now you just buried him on a podcast instead of having a private conversation. I didn't bury him on the pod- podcast. I'm listen. I loved working for Court Bauer. Loved. Well, you but said that I past tense. Are you done? No. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, but uh, so you're not calling anything for MLW anymore? No. I got uh, AJ's calling now. Okay. But, uh, I'm glad he came to his senses and dumped your ass, <laughs> but I love work, for, but that was at one time. I don't know. The reason for the story is there, there apparently is uh, some deep rooted problems between court Bauer and big cat Curtis Hughes. Don't know what it is, well, but I mean, I, I the rage flew into him. I can, I can give you a spoiler. What happened is okay. they had a private issue behind the scenes and then. Uh, Curtis Hughes went on a podcast and exposed it all and just spoke freely about it and court thought that was out of school. So that's it. <laughs> well, shouldn't do that. Then should you No. but back to the match, why, why are you changing? Oh, by the way, we should mention since we're talking about MLW, our great close personal friend, uh, Doug Markham, turn around, Doug referee extraordinaire. He, uh, he helped run our VIP line. Zanies. We're really proud to have had him passing out some koozies and eight by tens and swag for everybody who got VIP for the super show live with Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. Anyway, he returned home to a, a notice from MLW that, uh, he was not booked on the next show. Really? Yeah. So he will not be in New York city. He's been at every show for 18 months, but no moss. Oh, they gave him a reason. Did they just not book him this time or say, we don't need you anymore? I don't know. I just know he's all tore up about it. I'm sure he is. I like C- Doug. Cause he Doug loved, he loves buddy. MLW. He even ran our line with an MLW hoodie on. Yes, he did. Such a big MLW fan. How many stars this match get? These two guys can work. No, they can't. What? No, you can never say the name fucking big cat on this show ever again. Two stars. I just said two stars. <laughs> Referee's going to stop it. Referee's going to stop the match. Yeah. What? He just got tired of seeing it. So that's enough. Go to the locker room. And he wins with Luger's torture rack. The referee stops it. Here oh, it is. Okay. Here's finish. Okay. So he's calling out Lex Luger. That's what he did in the promo. He said he's been, you know, he's the big cat. And he's already beat everybody up and he's better to finish the main course. And that's Lex Luger. So he used Lex Luger's own finishing move to get the win. Good old school shit. Yeah. Good match. Not really a match that you would need on the clash of the champions, but you know what? Notice this. It was a goddamn candy man. This is the, uh, third match and it's the second with an Armstrong. God damn Andy man. How many goddamn Armstrongs do you have in this goddamn show? I'm Dick the bruiser. We are coming down to Chicago and then we're going to come down from Chicago and we're going to go to St. Louis and I'm going to be a special referee in St. Louis and Bobby Heenan. I'm looking for you because when I used to book Chicago, you weren't worth a shit. By the way, Wade would write. A clip was shown of Bruiser talking ambiguously about refereeing at Starcade. The not the so far so good show began the big plunge from here. And up next, we've got Tom Zink and Prime Time Brian Lee, which I got to tell you, I'm excited to see because I don't know that I've made you watch a lot of Brian Lee, but Brian Lee uh, was an ECW stalwart and uh, took some crazy bumps and whatnot, and then later he would go on to be. The, a fake Undertaker for the WWF at SummerSlam '94, when it was Undertaker versus Undertaker, and then uh, he would be a member of the Biker Crew for WWF, the Disciples of Apocalypse, the Harris Brothers, and 
Crush and Primetime Brian Lee. Gang Warfare. But this is early Brian Lee with the blonde mullet. Come on. Oh, by the way, uh, when we were in Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> That's the voice she used. Sorry. <laughs> you're just you're just all eat, eating up with smart ass, aren't you? Yeah. God. So anyway, when we were in Nashville, you yeah. know who works for that building? Works backstage? I do not. One of the Harris brothers. Really? He was there. Yep. Was it Ron or Don? Or can you tell them apart? I, I couldn't tell them apart, but I saw him back there and I thought, the hell's he doing here? Is he working for us behind the scenes now? And then I saw him, uh, talking to the, some of the building people. He walked around, he had a, uh, a clipboard in his hand. I'm thinking, hell, he works for the building. And he stuck out his hand. He said, Hey man, how you doing? I said, good. Conrad's the one that rips you on our podcast. Not me. And then I walked away. Okay. Tom Zink. Da, 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 da. Well, wow. By the way, you know that online right now, you just got some heat with what you said. Really? Look at this shit. This stupid motherfucker. <laughs> God damn. What? Did you see Tom Zink just fucking flying cross body? Nothing. <laughs> oh my God. For all the shit Cornette goes off about, about how nonsensical outlaw mud show bullshit, Tom Zink just body splashed the body splashed the invisible man. You just love shitting on the dead today, don't you? What? Brian Lee's not dead. Oh, prime time. Ryan Lee's got one great mullet though. I can tell you that. Tell everybody why prime time was a cool nickname back then. That's a sports fan. Uh, because Deion Sanders and Deion Sanders was who he was a two sports star in both baseball and football. I don't want to explain who Deion Sanders was. No, no, no. You got, there's a lot of listeners across the pond who have no idea what we're talking about, but Deion Sanders was the first guy to play both baseball and football. That was a pretty uncommon thing. Two guys did it at a high level and made a big name for themselves. Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson. Right. Deion Sanders played defense. He was famous for kick returns, punt returns, interceptions, shit like that. And he called himself neon Dion and prime time. And so it was clearly a little, uh, a nod to Deion Sanders from Brian Lee here. Right. And I think Dion is the only one who not only played both, but he also played in both the world series and the super bowl. It's pretty cool. When you think about, you know, the way he was able to do that with, you know, helicopter into games and shit like that. It was something else. He was ahead of his time. Yeah, absolutely. And Tom Zink, he is desperately out of time or was, I guess one star. One star. Take a look at this, man. Look at the agility of Tom Sink. Look at this. Talking about some power, man. Woo. By the way, up next, Michael Wall Street is going to be out here with Alexandria York, and they're going to take on the Star Blazer. The Star Blazer. Meltzer, or I keep doing that out of habit. Wade Keller would write York is a longtime TBS employee in charge of makeup. She now wears a suit at ringside. And enters info on wrestlers into a computer. He was right. What? Congratulations, Wade. You were right on that. All right. We're here with Alexandra York. Hello, Terry. Whoa. I'm going to be. I took the microphone out of my motherfucking hand. All right. You can't do a fucking promo anyway, but go ahead. What if he just put on a mask and started doing a puppet show right now? Huh. And all the reds, turn, all the lights turned red. What do you think? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I think that we need to see more of Alexander York. This goes to show you how fucking stupid you guys were. 
Oh, really? This show, this we've gotten what? Look at what you're making Alexandria York wear. And, okay. and, and here she's a single woman. But five years later, when we see her pop up in the WWF, she's a married person and she's got, she's strutting that ass. Yeah. Okay. You know, the reason, do you know the reason I tell you the reason? Well, I, I hope of, you would. That's why we're listening. Okay. Here's the reason because Vince owned his company and he could make those calls. Say we're going to put her out and be, uh, be very voluptuous, Damn. but here we had to cover her up. All right. You get it. No. We were owned by a TV station. We weren't owned by a wrestling company. That is it. Oh. All right. Who the fuck is star blazer? And boy, doesn't he have a nice jog to the ring? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to look like, like half of our listeners dicks next year. When we get these luchador condoms going. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that looks like Paul Bromwell. <laughs> Back and forth. Way to go. Stop it. Just stop it. Stop. Stop jogging. <laughs> stop moving. He's still moving. This is. What the fuck are we watching here? He's still moving. He's the star blazer. That's Tim Horner, by the way. Is it really? Yeah. Do, 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 do. He was also Ken Dove the Samurai. All right. Michael Wall Street, IRS. AKA the senior fiend. The senior fiend. By the way, I don't remember the last time I saw a microtunda match that I enjoyed. So I'm going to make this enjoyable for the audience. And Tony, if you'll check your inbox, you've got your lyrics for today's selection of Tony Reed's rap. Of course, we're going to be going to, uh, the classics here. I'm going to guess this song is 15 years old. What do you think? You are one of my actually uh, 15 like, years ago. They actually allowed lyrics like this to escape. Turns out I was wrong. It's 16 years old. Oh, and, uh, this is not that bad. You know, we've, we've been doing things from a male perspective. You recently did three, six mafias slob on my knob. Well, today we've got another track from O three. This one is. The milkshake song. Tony, are you ready? Bring it on, Conrad. I'm going to hit that beat in three, two, one. A milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're all like, it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. A milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're all like, it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. I know you want it. The thing that makes me that what the guys go crazy for, they lose their mind. The way I wind, I think it's time. La, 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 la. Warm it up. La, 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 la. The boys are waiting. La, 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 la. Warm it up. La, 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 la. Great fucking lyrics here, Conrad, I got to tell you. The boys are waiting. My milkshake bring milkshake brings. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. My milkshake. <laughs> you said my milkshake. <laughs> That's what, well, sorry. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right. It's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right. It's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. I can see you're on it. You want to teach the techniques that freaks these boys. It can't be bought. Just know thieves. What the fuck are we talking about now? Oh, I lost my place. Okay. Uh, thieves get caught. Watch if you're smart. La, 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 la. Warm it up. La, 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 la. The boys are waiting. La, 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 la. Warm it up. La, 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 la. The boys are waiting. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. And they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. A milkshake brings all the boys the yard and they're like it's better than yours damn right it's better than yours i can teach you but i gotta charge oh once you get involved everyone will look this way 
So you must maintain your charm. Same time, maintain your halo. Just get the perfect blend, plus what you have within. Then this next eyes squint, and you'll pick up your scent. La, 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 la. Warm it up. La, 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 la. The boys are waiting. La, 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 la. Warm it up. La, 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 la. The boys are waiting. My milkshake brings the boys to the yard, and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. And they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. Motherfucker. You enjoy that? No. Okay. It's rare that you get to see it in real life. See what in real life? Something actually jumping the shark, but we just did it. <laughs> hey, it's your goddamn lyrics. I, I didn't write that shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, but you, you sent it to me. So this was it. This was thing for, called it was, was, a, it was requested. You motherfucker. By the way, do you remember playing the original pro wrestling game on Nintendo way back in the day? Uh, I do just, not. It was just called pro wrestling. Well, one of the main characters was from Mexico and he was, he weighed 220 pounds and he did the somersault kick and the flying cross chop. He was six foot three and his name was star man. And I feel like star blazer here is loosely based on star man. Star man, by the way, was also, I think one of the first professional wrestling gimmicks of the bad boy, Joey Janela. Boy, Janelle is tremendous. Gonna be a big star. Yes, he is. Already is, I guess. No, he's gonna be a big star. I, I think you, oh, on a national level, I think he's gonna be a big star, but I think it's gonna take time because we've only been going like, what, six, seven weeks? Yeah, but I'm just saying he had a lot of buzz coming in. You know, he's. Right. <laughs> he got marketing and positioning a lot earlier than a lot of other performers do. And so he built a big name for himself with some help from Giancarlo and, and Brett Lauderdale. And I mean, he had some real buzz. Here we go. Gordon uh, Soleil. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, the wrestling wrap up is the magazine that no one is reading. I wouldn't read it even if I were sober. However, it's also available on newsstands everywhere along with your favorite porn, ah, uh, ah, uh, and sports illustrated, which we understand is going to go out of business by 2019. Here's the top 10. Number one is, or number 10 is Norman and the Juicer. My God. Big Cat and the Motor City Madman are number nine. Can't talk about Big Cat. You get mad. The Candyman and Tim Horner. The Master Fucking Blasters. What a gimmick. Southern Boys with or without their Dixie flag. Ricky Morton and Tommy Rich. How about that one? Fabulous Freebirds. They suck. The Nasty Boys. We love them. Rick Flair and Arn Anderson, we just put them there for the hell of it. And number one, of course, would be the Steiner Brothers. Ah, uh-uh. ah. And now I'm going to go to Malio's and have a gin and tonic. And doom the world tag team champions. I don't know if they still have Malio's in Tampa or not. Oh my God, we're going to do another top 10. This time for the world championship. Uh, beautiful Bobby, Z Man. Uh, Michael Wall Street, Flying Brian, Terry fucking Taylor. Boy, we were low on talent that year. Arn Anderson with the biggest head in the business. Ric Flair with the biggest nose in the business. Lex Luger, the biggest ego in the business. Sid Vicious with the smallest brain in the business. Stan Hansen with the biggest chaw tobacco in his side. And the world heavyweight champion. Oh, it's me. Sting. That's the goofiest picture of Sting ever. Was it not? It was. <laughs> It was, but we would put it on there, wouldn't we? Let's find a goofy picture and put it on there. International tag team tournament. The African qualifying. Uh, this is real life, my friend. The African qualifying match. Oh, oh my God. Coming up next, we got Sergeant Kruger and Colonel DeClerc, which is Ray Apollo and Ted Petty, who is going to be, believe it or not, 
Yep. One half of the public enemy. They're going to defeat Kalua and the beast, which is Larry Hamilton and Bill Tab. So are, are the announcers going to talk about the racism in South Africa uh, Wade, during the match? Wade would got- say it was short, and that is good because these four guys, like they'd never worked together. They all tried, but the timing was so far off. It looked like one team was the sound and the other team was a picture of an old movie. This match lost more Starcade customers than it gained. Uh, but of course this is all part of it. Well, you, you mentioned nature boy, buddy Rogers. There he goes against Pat O'Connor. Um, this is part of the first annual Pat O'Connor tag team tournament. Of course, we never had a second one, but we thought we would because we called this an annual tournament. The best camera shot of the night. You love the upskirts. That's the reason you like that. Oh, just a dog. All right, move up. You think anybody bought that pay-per-view for that tournament? Yeah. A few people who still believed it was real. You got to appreciate this is the era of the Kung Fu movie movies, like best of the best, which is fucking badass. but it was all these different, you know, we're on the heels of the karate kid franchise being such a big success. People had an appetite for tournaments and international flair and they they're being very specific in the clips they're showing. Right. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. (laughs) Them cats were fast as lightning. By the way, we did not plan any of that. How about Ted Petty, dude? Nah, 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 nah. Although the other guy, Ray Apollo is going to be a doink extra. Would that be the lowest form of, uh, what did you do in wrestling answer? I was a doink extra. No, I called thunder. Probably the answer. <laughs> yep. You'd be right about that. I'm not saying that to be ugly. God, the African delegation here. Boy, they look like they really want to come to the room, didn't they? All right. It's our African elimination. (laughs) Can you believe this is real life? (laughs) I I love you fucking snorted. Hey, can we talk about the, uh, the show of Zanies a little longer here? Yeah, why not? Two things. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess a, a lot. We should first of all, thank, uh, Lucy. And I, and I don't know that. I don't know that Dorfman wants us to shout him out, but I want to thank Lucy. Always great hospitality. Jonathan Craig to help us set it up. Great bunch of folks. If you're in Nashville and you want to laugh, you got to go to Zany's Nashville. One of the more underrated comedy clubs in America. And, uh, the rumor and innuendos, they're going to be doing some big stuff that you might see on TV soon. Uh, But a friend of the show, Corey Ryan Forrester was there and he did our, our mic work for us. So fans can ask questions from the crowd and he was polite enough to help us out. One of the funniest men in America. Will you stop? So by the time we're, we're in the back, of course, it's late show starting at 11. Hey, anybody hungry? I want something to eat. And I'm always hesitant. Like, uh, I don't know about eating bar food right before I go on stage. You know what I mean? Like what if, yeah, if you got a shit, a yeah. Part. Like yeah. I don't want to put myself in a bad spot here. Don't get me wrong. I ain't scared to eat it. I'm scared that I may have to shit. So, right. Corey Ryan Forrester says, oh, do you want some pimento cheese? And I thought that was like the most random thing ever. I don't know that you were paying attention to this part of the conversation. I was not. But he says, do you want some pimento cheese? And I'm like, what? 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 You just fucking have pimento cheese to offer me right now at 11 o'clock at night on a Wednesday in Nashville when you live in Chattanooga? And he's like, no, dog, I got it in my truck. Uh, why? But why? 
Why do you have pimento cheese in your truck on a Wednesday night in Nashville at 11 o'clock? Duh. I always have pimento cheese in my truck. Well, Corey, you, you're supposed to refrigerate that shit. You can't just Conrad. It's 38 degrees outside. Go outside. Guess what, buddy? You're in a refrigerator. It's fine. Wait a minute. So you just use your truck as a refrigerator. Well, hell yeah, man. I took daddy to that, uh, cracker rail before we went to AW tonight. We, uh, we got an extra order of chicken and dumplings. What for? Well, they're in my refrigerated truck right now. And I'm gonna eat them some bitches by hand on the way home by hand. Well, I'm going to be driving and ain't like I can use a fucking knife and fork genius. So you're going to bare hand chicken and dumplings on the way home. Hell yeah. All right. Real conversation with me and Corey Ryan Forster. That truly is one of the most redneck conversations I've ever heard. I couldn't believe it. I've never heard of people just keeping food in their car. Well, fermented cheese and chicken and dumplings. That's about as country as you can get it. I'm just saying like, do you know anybody who keeps food in there? I, no. I, take, I take care of my cars. As you know, you've never gotten in any of my vehicles and they've been a mess. I don't do that. No, you're right. My shit's clean. smells good. Roll tide all the time. This motherfucker has aisle six at the food land in his back seat. Which reminds me, can I use one of your cars to take a trip in? Sure. What's the car that you had in Nashville? Uh, it was a sedan. It was a black sedan. It's one of the most comfortable I've ever ridden in my life. Well, thank you, sir. It was, I've never, me and JR were sitting in the back there and I looked at JR and went, son of a bitch, this is comfortable. I've never, wow, I got to take this on a long trip. By the way. How uh, effective was the planning between Steve, Patty, Dave Silva, and myself that not only did we have uh, a nice, big, comfortable car for you to jump right into, but the seat heaters were already running. We parked right outside the back door. I mean, we had you in and out of there. Oh, yeah. Immediately. Yeah, it was uh, It was really made us feel like stars. Really did. Well, with CMAs being in town that night, I was a little nervous. Like, are we going to be able to get to Zanies in time ourselves, or are we going to have to just sit still for hours? You know what I mean? Right. So I wanted to, uh, get an illegal parking spot that we got a permit for and then hustle. And we did, and it was fine. Yeah. And we effectively ignored this match. Oh my gosh. The South African. No, 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 no. You know what? Just to celebrate that Ted Petty won, I think we should play his song. Eric and all the wrestling fans to help me find my underwear. I lost it the other day when I was going out to play tennis. Never made it. What a terrible promo. It's so amazing to me that some of the some of the most respected promoters in the history of wrestling couldn't promote for shit. Isn't it something? Like how was this guy successful in it just tells you the bar to be successful in wrestling. Once upon a time was not very big when the best he could do to sell it. Hello wrestling fans. I'm Sam Mushnick here to invite you to join me in St. Louis at the Keel auditorium for the Paddle Connor Memorial tag team tournament. And that's the whole fucking that's, that's it. That's our pitch. That's our pitch. Meanwhile, you're over here overselling everything. The greatest night in the history of our great sport. I didn't do that yet, motherfucker. You know, you've got to be thinking as you're trying to introduce and get everybody excited. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after our African exhibition match here with Long Jack Dung and Rodney Pipes and Lexington Steel, we uh we want to welcome in here an opportunity for me 
to kill myself because I'm here and not with the ultimate warrior. By the way, I love this mat, this look from Halloween Havoc. Such an underrated show. You love that burgundy mat. I love the presentation. It was different. Like I, I can always tell which Halloween Havoc this was. This is my favorite one, by the way, 1990. You like this Halloween Havoc better than you did, like the one with the Macho Man and Hogan? And- I'm talking about when I was a kid, dude. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Things that when you were a kid are always the, oh my God. Oh shit. <laughs> it's great. Isn't it? But if you remember, this is the match, this show, not only did I have this, but I had the Sid vicious sting and then Barry Wyndham was like a lookalike sting, which was great. And I fucking loved, and I mean, loved the Steiner brothers and nasty boys. They beat the shit out of each other in this, right. ma- this ring, just such a good show. But no, to your point, you know, top to bottom. Halloween Havoc 96 was probably much better. 97 wasn't as good of a card overall, but the, uh, the Eddie Guerrero Ray Mysterio was tremendous. Is this the motor city madman here? Taking a, yeah. taking a payday from Paul Heyman. Taking a payday from Paul dangerously. Holy shit. I thought we don't know who it is. And then when it's revealed, we don't care. Oh, they're trying to make. Paul Heyman, a movie star here. I uh, know. And by the way, Paul would have been a brilliant actor in a lot of the, like he is such an eighties villain. Hey, you know, the, uh, the remake of rollerball was a rollerball. Yeah. Wait a I thought he did a good job in that movie. Yeah. He was supposed to be securing a deal for a television deal for ECW, but instead he was filming cameos for himself. That's what the boys say. All right. He did it. He did it. Oh, Lord. What the fine thing. Did you ever watch the movie, the last dragon from 1985? No. Well, it's tremendous. And the, the villain there is called Eddie Arcadian. And it was played by an actor named Christopher Murney. Paul this Heyman was, could have been that character. This wasn't a Bruce Lee movie. Was it? No, it's spoofing that kind of, oh, okay. Yeah, remember when black exploitation really popped off? Yep. Well, this is like the black exploitation version of a Bruce Lee movie. Okay. Oh, by the way, I watched some Dolomite stuff the other day. Oh, it's great. It's, tr- it's great. Isn't it? It's tremendous. You rat soup eating motherfucker. That's the first thing he said in that movie. <laughs> and when he said that, I went, that's where Conrad got that term. Dude, we got to watch. I made Bruce, I made Bruce Pritchard watch this back in like 2000. God, this may have been. 15 or 16. I made him watch, um, the last dragon. And there's a character in there named show enough that she would fucking love, dude. He's the best heel ever show enough. He's got, so imagine like if, um, the foot soldiers from Ninja turtles or like live action. That's what his group is. Okay. And he's like the lead villain. He's got, an, he's got this very pronounced outfit and the, he's a tall, lanky dude. He's got this big Afro and he walks in and does his best Sid vicious. Who's the man. And all the minions go show enough. It's <laughs> like, motherfucker, this is wrestling right here. I'm telling you, I may have seen the movie. I, for some reason, it's sounding very familiar. Well, we're going to have to watch it. We, uh, did I tell you that we're, we're having a no holds barred Christmas? I don't know that I've told you this. No, you did not. So as Lex Luger's making his way to the ring here and they're firing off sparklers for him, legit sparklers. Um, look at him. This is like the anti Goldberg entrance. Get away, get away. Um, wait a minute. Who's up behind him? Is that the big cat himself? That's the big cat. I can't say his name. Court will be mad. Somewhere. And walking towards him right behind you, Lex, turn around. Boom, boom. Boy, Lex would throw a punch, couldn't he? By the way, I don't think he picked up Mount Sinuation earlier. I'm saying that you have ruined Doug Markham's wrestling career. What? Doug Markham had one shot at being on TV and he'd been on TV for 18 months with MLW and he was loyal to MLW and drove to every MLW show and 
did whatever he could to be at every MLW show for 18 months. He'd cancel all their bookings, miss birthdays, miss holidays, what anniversaries, whatever. He was committed to MLW so much so that when he ran our line for us in VIP last week in Zanies, he wore an MLW sweatshirt. But you have shit on Court Bauer and that relationship so effectively, so hard that the mere idea that he helped us at a live show got him unbooked from MLW. He's off MLW, bro, and it's Tony Schiavone's fault. Oh, it is not my fault. You, you. Is it me? Is it mine? And no, you shit disturbing motherfucker. Is it Jim Ross? Yeah, no, it's it's no it's nobody's. Well, oh. we're gonna have to get a higher Doug Markham shirt going because he didn't have a job now. I mean, you 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 cost him his biggest and best one. Meanwhile, this Motor City Madman can really move, can he? Yeah. Hey. Ooh. All right. So in 1989, WWF released the movie, no holds barred. And at the, that was over the summer. All right. Then at the end of the year, after SummerSlam 89, where it was, uh, Zeus and Zeus was involved. Yeah. That's when he killed that guy in that movie. That's right. They're going to finish the pay-per-view or finish the year off with the match, the movie. And so you could order it on pay-per-view where you would watch the movie on pay-per-view. And then at the end, you would see a steel cage match that was filmed in Nashville at the very building you and I were at earlier this week for AW and it was promoted on TV with a voiceover from Vince McMahon. <laughs> and it sounded something like this. Why well, have a regular Christmas when you can have a no holds barred Christmas type deal. So we made fun of that on something to wrestle in 2016 and it's stuck. And so now a lot of the folks who are listening to our show back then, something to wrestle still reference no holds barred Christmas this time of year. So we are doing a no holds barred Christmas with Conradison and I want to extend a formal invitation to you. Uh, when will this be? This will be the weekend of, uh, December 13th through the 15th. Well, you know what? Uh, let's see. A lot of the chaps in the chat will be there. You are, you're welcome to be our, our guest as well. Uh, huh. but our, uh, our gimmick attorney. Oh, Lordy. He'll gimmick. be there. Okay. Uh, Scott who books all of our, uh, travel and, and star cast venues. He'll be there. The rumor and innuendo is Dave Hancock will be there. Of course, you know, Corey and Cassio and Silva will be there. Doodoo is going to be there in case, uh, somebody needs to die and no one do anything about it. Matt Coon will be there. Jay Z. The rumor and innuendo is Jay Z will be there. Bring in Chelsea. I'm sure. Cause here's the other thing worth mentioning. This, this is a wives friendly event. And we're going to do dirty Santa You're in the loop on dirty Santa. A lot of these Yankees in the group chat were not familiar. I'm not in. Well, I, I remember bad Santa from the movie, but I don't know dirty Santa. All right. So the gimmick is everybody's going to bring a $50 gift. We throw them all, all the presents under the tree. So that way, instead of you buying a present for all 38 people, you just bring one. You're a dude. You bring a dude gift worth 50 bucks. We draw numbers. And if you get number one, you go pick any gift you want. If I drew number two, I go behind you and I can either take your present or go pick another one from under the tree. And we go until everybody's got a present. Ta-da. That's dirty Santa. Dirty Santa. Okay. If you really want, we can give it another reason. We can, we can call it a Klondike bill Santa. And, uh, we'll let you lay under a glass coffee table. And we'll just throw all of our shit up there and you pick what you want. I like that too. And I guess we're watching some wrestling, aren't we? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, the 13th, I don't imagine we would, I would imagine, uh, you know, I would just cook some steaks or whatever and we would fellowship, but on the 14th, uh, I'm going to, uh, have some Italian food catered in and we're going to watch the NWA pay-per-view into the fire with Nick Aldis defending his world title. They're going to do it in a. Where are they going to do it at? I don't know. On the 15th, the next day yeah. is when, uh, 
live from Minnesota, WWE will present their pay-per-view. So I picked that wiki on for the wrestling fans who are in the group chat who want to watch a little wrestling. I can show with the uh, NWA pay-per-view one day and the WWE the next day. It'll feel old school. All right. I'll put it on my calendar. See if it sticks. I got some new booze. I think you'd like too. great. Uh, can you have somebody come pick me up in your car? I, I can make sure that you're driven around town in that car the entire time you're here. In fact, if you go ahead and confirm this weekend, I will let everybody know that the master bedroom upstairs has been reserved for Nas. Oh, uh, which means I got to bring Lois. She'd have fun. Oh, I know she would listen. She had a blast at my birthday party. I'm going to invite uh, her, but I don't expect him to come. But I do think that one of your friends is going to be back and better than ever. Really? He's got a knack for making things better. Okay. Of course, there's no chance that uh, one of our red faced friends will be there on Friday. He's, he's got a job on Friday. But there is a chance he could do a Saturday run in. All right. Well, it sounds like a great weekend. No holds barred Christmas. How about the nasty boys, dude? I never get tired of the fucking nasty boys. Not from this era, man. Oh, and they're facing the young bloods. At least Jay's not here because he's dead. So, did you see the lights dim? I did. <laughs> Was that for an entrance or that's just fucking us? That's fucking us. Yeah, I love the nasty boys here, man. They, they, they see they were legitimate. They were just fucking ass kickers, dude. Ass, ass kicking, rough and rugged. Fuck you, heels. By the way, the uh, Lex Luger match got a dud rating. Oh, uh, I imagine it did. You see, as we were talking about uh, no holes barred Christmas, see him try to pick up the Motor City Madman. <laughs> I'm thinking, ooh, dead weight can't get him up. But still, it was a dud. He gave you terrible promos. And guess what? He was still one of our biggest stars. So someone explain that enigma. By the way, Wade Keller would say, Jim Ross, of the match we're talking about now, Jim Ross spent the match trying to bury the Nasty Boys because they gave notice that they were going to the WWF and turned down a $156,000 per year guarantee from WCW. Wow. How That's about that shit? Dude, can I tell you how much I'm dreading Starcade 84? Yeah, you're dreading it? Shit. I'm dreading it so much, dude. Let's not do it. No, we have to. No, we don't. We got Danny Brown and Mike Davis. We got Brian Adias and Mr. Edo. We got Jesse Barr and Mike Graham. We got Assassin One and Buzz Taylor taking on the Zim, uh, Zambui Express. Oh, my God. We got Manny Fernandez and Black Bart. We got Paul Jones and Jimmy Valiant. We got Ron Bass and Dick Slater. Oh my God. We got Ivan and Nikita Koloff taking on Ole Anderson and Keith Larson. Jesus. Finally, here's your big three matches. Tully Blanchard and Ricky Steamboat. I'm for it. Yep. Wahoo McDaniel and superstar Billy Graham. It's only four minutes. I'm for it. Yep. Then your main event with smoke and Joe Frazier as your special guest referee. And only goes 12 minutes. Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair. I'm for it. God damn that undercard. Woo. Well, let's not do the undercard. No, we have to. It's Bob Cottle, it's Gordon Soley, and of course you're hanging around as the interviewer. Tom Miller is your ring announcer. Greensboro, North Carolina, November twenty second. Wow. Coming, Great. Your, coming your way next week. Uh all right. Well, you know what I need to do? I need to come over this week, <clears throat> get slap ass drunk with you. Yes. 
and then we'll yeah. do it again. Dude, if you come over, let's do this. Let's get way ahead. Let's do like the next like eight episodes. <laughs> just by the end, we'll just be sloppy, drunk, and loopy. These will be known as the dark sh- the dark episodes. I just don't know when I can come over. Because when you when you start drinking, you get dark. Dark. You do. I'll never forget the first time you got drunk. You just looked at me. I mean, just bright eyed. And you said, you ever wonder what your wife's head would look like on a stick? <laughs> and I, I was like, whoa, 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 what the fuck? And so then I didn't sell it. Right. I was like, your wife or my wife? And he's like, you're not married. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good call. So yeah. Uh, no, I've never wondered what Lois's head would look like on a stick. And you just grinned ear to ear and you said, well, I have. Okay, cool. Let's change the subject here. (laughs) I don't remember any of that. Why not? I don't know. I just, maybe I was drunk. I just Mm. don't remember. Mm. I don't think I would ever talk like that. Mm. Lois might about me. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See that? Yeah. See that? But she's one of my head on the stick for quite a while. She's going to get it, right? Yeah. Eventually she will. It's amazing. You, You know, you've been married 38 years. Right. And then sometimes you just stop and you think. First of all, it went by quickly many times. Sometimes it seems like it never would get by. Oh, here we go. Steiner's running in. I got to, I got to call this. Look at him go. Now, Nick Patrick just came out and said, we've got to do something about the nasty boys and the Steiners. Hell of a little angle they had here. Wasn't it? I liked it. Fans loved it too, man. They were into their Steiners. They hated the nasty boys. And that's it for that match. So anyway, sometimes you just, your marriage goes by quickly. Sometimes it slows down. But sometimes I just say, wow, how did I hang out this long? You gave up on life until you met me. Well, there's some validity to that. The Night Stalker and Sid Vicious collide next. By the way, that, that match, in case you're wondering, gets negative three stars. Wade would say. Rule number one to turning a heel into a baby face. Do not have him threaten the number one baby face in a pre-match interview. Rule number two, do not turn him by having two new wrestlers attack him. Both rules broken. Pee Wee Anderson at one point stopped Sid's arm in mid motion from hitting stalker. Timing was off the whole match. After getting clubbed and pinned with a huge ax stalker got right up and attacked Sid. And they say the sheets exposed the business negative three stars. Wow. How about this fucking, this look here, this character. Did you see the, the, the video font, what it said with Ox Baker? Ain't no Ox Baker here. It's true. Unless he's going to do some sort of run in here. You don't recognize him. Do you? I was hoping you would acknowledge oh, yeah. this. Yeah. That's uh that's rap. There you go. Brian Clark, Brian Clark. And here he comes. Sid Vicious looking as only he can look. Is he have one of the best looks in the history of wrestling? Yeah. That's right. All right, here's here's the interview. I'm gonna play it for the audience. If you I'm coming right up Houston's thing, you know one thing. I could beat you on my worst day. Because Sid Vicious rules the world. So Sting is the most over person in the, in the biz, uh, or in, on this side of the pond anyway. And he's, uh, he's been called out here. I don't get it. He's supposed to be a baby face now. Right. Why is he still saying I rule the world and I can beat you on my worst day? Because we don't, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. We didn't. 
Did you prefer Sid in the little trunks he wore in the WWF or in this singlet that he wore here in WCW? I like the singlet. It was a very unique look. The black singlet's better though. Really? Yeah. Like the action figure version. Yeah. Okay. I don't, but yeah, I, but I'm glad he wore the red here since night stalker was in black, but every time you looked at Sid, just the arms and the traps, just pumpkins on his shoulders, man. Yeah, man. Ole, who was the booker here, really loved the tough guy baby face. And I guess that's why he had Sid do that interview. You know, we should do something next week. I know I'm signing up for more work. Yeah. What if we did two shows next week? Uh, what no. if what if we did two? What if we did Starcade 84? Uh, drop it on Thanksgiving. We'll drop it on Monday. But you can listen to it on Thanksgiving. Well, I guess it's Wednesday. So same thing. On Patreon Monday. But what if for Patreon, me and you did Survivor Series 1990? Uh, I don't have time for all that. I wish I did. It's the debut of the gobbledygooker. And the undertaker. We can do it next Thanksgiving or we can do survivor series this Thanksgiving and not do Starcade. Nah, we got too many JCP apologists here on the show. We got to do Starcade. Okay. For you, JCP apologists, do us a favor, go to the network, hit play on Stark on Starcade 84 right now, right now. And then and tell us. Tell us what you thought about it. No, I don't think <laughs> start it send, right now. Send us a tweet. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> uh, gobbledygook. Oh Lord. Here comes Curtis Hughes again. What the fuck? Luger hit him. We walked away. He came back down. <laughs> Just come down and take a big fucking bump. He's going to hit him with the axe. There's some shit here, isn't it? Yeah. Now he's just going to get right up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And how about that pin? He was he was kicking out in three. On the pin. Wow, this is brutal. Yeah. We sure know how to take, we, we sure knew how to take, uh, potential big stars and make them look like shit. Didn't, didn't we? And speaking of looking like shit, let's go. There you go. Look at this shit. Uh, look at this shit. Oh, you know something to Tony Shivani. He's taking the yellow paint out of his mouth. Yes, sir. And he looks pretty fucking wacky now, but just wait till he gets older. <laughs> How wacky are you going to look? You're going to look so fucking silly. You're going to be wearing fanny packs. You're going to be wearing a dumbass hat. You're going to be wearing light colored tuxedos. You're yeah. You're going to look so fucking dumb. And guess what? I'm just going to shave my head and fly airplanes. Woo. Hey, 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 come on. Hey, Hey, Zubas. Hey, I want that fanny pack. Hey, that's right. We want that fanny pack. Ah, hey, we're going to walk away. What the fuck? What's the fucking deal with, uh, the dude we got in here? here Elegante. He finally showed up. That's right, amigo. I made my airplane. 
Look how big that fucker is. I mean, that's Tracy Smothers right there. That's not a little guy. Oh, look how fucking big that motherfucker is. He doesn't know where the camera is. He doesn't know where he is <laughs> or his airplane. Uh, let's hear from Missy. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'd never had sex with Tony Shimani, but I wish I would have. He was a happily married man. I know he wished he would have had sex with me, but the only thing he could do was go to his hotel room and jerk off in my pictures. And you can get them on the wrestling wrap up. Stay tuned. By the way, since we're talking about jerking off, have you seen what I did on Twitter recently? You jerked off on Twitter? Kinda. Okay. Let me explain. Please do. <sighs> Your girl, Francine. Oh. She's, uh, she had surgery recently, as you I know, want to send her my best because I love her. Well, she, her husband announced she was going uh, using her account. Hey, this is her husband. I think that's the way he referred to himself. She's going to be taking a break. Social media. Well, she tries to get better, but right. if you want to support her, go buy something here. Right. A few days later. Thanks for all the well wishes. Here's a link to the store type of deal. Well, he does this enough to where some fans started to say, oh, this isn't about communicating with the fans. This is all about money. Right. And she got upset. Okay. I, I get that. And she felt the need to respond and, and she went on a little bit of a rant and one of the tweets said, and also there will be tweets about my businesses, maybe from my husband, maybe from my partner, maybe from me. It's a job. Don't leave comments saying it's all about the money with you. If you want to buy something, I appreciate it. If not, keep scrolling and shut your mouth. Wow. And I recognized that our friend was in distress. So I tweeted, looks like you're going through a rough patch. So sorry to hear that. I'm going to commission Tony Schiavone to draw you a hand turkey to cheer you up just in time for Thanksgiving. Hashtag you're welcome. Hashtag smiles on faces. And she quoted the tweet and said, any handmade art or craft from Tony Schiavone would put a smile on my face. He's my favorite slap dick of all time. And I responded with the Jack Nicholson evil. Yes. GIF from the departed. So. I need you to throw together your hand turkey dick and let's get it overnight to Francine in time for Thanksgiving. No. What's the problem? I got, I mean, she fucking says right here. She wants it for everybody to see. The problem is if I traced my dick and balls on the sheet of paper, you'll, you'll say, what the fuck is that? It's like, well, then you're going to use crayons behind it and make it like a turkey. It's just a blob. Now, if I could use like pop pops, dick, then we may get somewhere with it. Francine will look at that and say, shit, that's all he got. And I will go, shit, that is all I got. Who are the fucking master blasters here? Are they, is that who they're they're wrestling? No, Magnum force. But I do wish her well. I golly. She and I have had a chance to talk a couple of times face to face. Always enjoyed my discussions with her. I have a lot of time for her. Also, I have a couple of throwback pictures of her on my phone. Look at that fucking maneuver. Fans ate that up, didn't they? Here we go. Ready for another run in Conrad? I'm ready. Fuck. Why not? I love the ramp. The ramp makes the run ins easy. Yeah, but you know what? I, I like running through the crowd. Yeah. And knobs take a bump backwards.
Wow, that that Frankensteiner was ahead of its time, buddy. And now it's just a high spot. But back then it was a finish. I have in my hand here a document. Ric Flair has done a hand turkey dick for me. And as you can tell, we need two sheets of paper. All right. Uh, oh, God. This is this Teddy Long thing, isn't it? Where Teddy Long, if Flair wins, Teddy's got to be a chauffeur for the day, something like that. Yeah. Let's play the audio. Well One of us goes against one of them. Keep in mind, the world television champion, and in my own modest right, six times, your world champion. So Simmons, you and Reed, and Teddy Long, remember tonight, you've got to walk the aisle. It's a simple case of man's greed completely destroying them. Okay, fans, still to come. Woo! So the stakes in this match, as silly as it is. <sighs> can you believe this is a real thing? What we're talking yes. about here? Yes, I can. See how fucking stupid we were. One of those, you know, in hindsight deals we were talking about. Right. Either way though, the stakes involve not only the world tag team championships, the stakes also involve Teddy long. Right. And the concept here, this is a real thing. Yeah. If flair wins, he and Arn Anderson earn a, earn a rematch for the NWA tag team titles and Teddy long has to be Rick Flair's chauffeur for a day. And if Butch, Butch Reed wins, Teddy Long gets the yacht and limousine, and there's no rematch at Starcade for the tag titles. Yeah. Uh, you know, though, of all this bullshit we've gone through, this uh, out-of-focus, shrouded look of the Scorpion was pretty fucking cool. Nothing else about it was cool, but the Ole Anderson behind the shroud was cool. There's the unmasking of the black scorpion that went from black to red. And there's another black scorpion coming out of the back in Asheville, North Kakalaka. I love ramp on. And now here he is again. Oh, is this where they're going to change to the tiger? Meanwhile, in the back, he's getting a blowjob. Why do you say things like that? I don't know. It's just in my DNA makeup. Okay? It's just foul language. He's gone. He's gone. And we got such a great shot of that, didn't we? We got such a great shot of that. Play the audio here for the listeners. <laughs> Surprised? You should be. Pay attention to your match sting. That's a scorpion. Fight Fight sting. Fight. Fight sting. Tonight they meet face to face, and what will happen? Ladies and gentlemen, that's the big question. What will happen? Let's go now, ladies. You see the whole situation has been really wild and crazy. Let's go now to Paul and Anderson. He's waiting on this. Man, this black scorpion shit, as an adult, I can say, 
fucking stupid. But as a kid, I was all in, baby. Oh, I know. I know. Dun, 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 dun. I, I know. I, I get it. And as an adult <clears throat> being a part of this, there was a certain element of it that I liked. Uh, but then it, Jesus Christ, take a look at the camera. Nope, not going to look at the camera. Nope, not going to look at the camera. Turn around. Talk to these millions of people looking at you. Nope, not going to do it. Love talking to these people. Is this the tiger gimmick? Uh, it's a leopard, I think. Okay. But yeah, here we go. Play the audio. Something that I got to do, and I'm going to do it. Chance face to face. Okay, I'm not disagreeing with... What you doing? Annoying a sound engineer? But what I'm telling you is... Will you cut the music? I'm talking. Hey! Cut the music. I'm talking. Hey! Hey! Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. I'm here, Sting. Okay, okay, come on over Watch here. me Jordan. while I show you. Don't do it. You made a deal with them. Magic. Hey, hey, you made a deal with them. Come here. I made a deal. Watch Sting. <laughs> you got the yeah, guy in the What is he doing to this guy? <laughs> Stay where you are, Sting. Oh, hey, you Watch made a deal with them. Stand here, Paul. Yeah. What you doing? Watch very closely, Sting. More black men. Watch magic. as I spin ah. <laughs> Sting. <laughs> I'm too powerful. It's stir of God. It's stir of You made a deal. You told him he could show you his black magic. I'm Watch letting me. him do his stuff. Fine, let him do it. Watch me, Sting. Keep him back dangerously. Remember the green. Throw him in the cage. Yes, the cage. Watch now, Sting. Watch now, what's Now, hold it, hold it. You promised him. Let him go. Very closely, Sting. I'll show you powers you never knew What's he doing? I possess. Ah! Whoa, 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 whoa! Sting. Imagine. Hey, you made him a deal. You made him a deal. What in the? What is he? What is this? My Say, powers hey, I'm not gonna stand for this. I'm gonna jump sting. down there in a second. I don't care about the rules, Polly. You made him a deal. Come on, sting. Yeah, I don't Hey, will you, hey, get back here! Catch me if you can. Stay, get back here! Maybe it's you have a chance. <laughs> what in the world? Where did he go? Tony, describe what we just saw. We saw a magic show that you normally would see at a kid's uh, birthday party. <laughs> Except don't bring a leopard to a kid's birthday party, please. Because it could eat the kids and then you blame Conrad and Tony. Look, well, you know what? When I watched it happen, I thought, because there's there's element of magic that I always thought was pretty cool. I thought, wow, that's great. But in the context of a wrestling angle, stupid as shit, huh? This is the worst. Yes. Worst clash ever. I don't, I don't know how to describe the segment we just saw, dude. The apparatus he put on the kid's head, the kid's then reaction. He, then he picks him up, put him in a cage. The only good thing about it, the leopard really sold it. Went right to the camera and growled. He didn't lay in there like a cat that had been drugged. It's like. I'm going to bring this up, and I know it's a sore subject with you, but uh, at LSU, you know, they bring the tiger out. They used to. Do they still bring him out on the field in his carriage or whatever? I don't know. Well, I was down in uh, in 2002, 2001. I was down on the field. We played LSU, and they brought out the tiger, and they bring him out in this little cage, and I'm standing right there, and that motherfucker is either drunk or drugged or don't give a shit because he was kind of laying in there not moving. So maybe I'm wrong, but that day he wasn't having any of it. 
everybody was going crazy. I do want to mention Francine has followed up and said that if you send her a hand turkey, she'll put it on the refrigerator. You don't, but you didn't use the word dick, did you? you just hand turkey. Yeah, hand turkey. Yeah, because you wanted you wanted to be a surprise that it's Tony's dick that he traced on a piece of paper. How would she know, bro? Well, I have a feeling that there are a bunch of people who listen to this podcast that would stooge it off. Not that our listeners are stooges, but I'm sure a good cross section of them are stooges. So you can't keep a secret anymore. You know, K Fabe's dead. So anyway, my love to Francine. But I'm not tracing my dick and have her put it on the refrigerator. Why not? That's terrible. That's that's a terrible fucking thought. Why? Her and her husband are are entertaining people, and they go to the kitchen and they're having a drink. And one of the guys says, "Is that the trace of somebody's dick on your refrigerator?" And she'll go, "Oh my God, it is." How would she know what your dick looks like? She wouldn't know what my dick looks like, but stooges would let her know what it is. All right. We're in the midst of this great angle here. Obviously play a little audio here. Here we go. A conspiracy. I never read nothing like that. I signed a contract, but I never read that. Do you think I'm going to wear this stuff right here? You're going to be chauffeur for a day. If your men don't win Tuesday night. Well, let me tell you something. I'm very confident that doom will take out either Rick Blair or Anderson. And I'm not going to wear no silver cap. I'm not going to wear no coat, no gloves or nothing. All right. Well, don't bring me out here and humiliate me. Well, so, homie, don't what? play that. Homie, don't play that. I don't play that. And you know what I mean? Badass looking motherfuckers, they weren't they? Yeah. Ah. Of course, Teddy's standing right in front of them. That's all right. Supposed to. By the way, this match is going to get three stars. They're going to go 14 minutes. It's not bad. Of course, you know, Ric Flair can have a match anybody, but, you know, Butch Reed wasn't the world's worst worker. He was pretty good. He was over in Florida. And I think he was over in Texas, too. And, of course, here comes the nature boy, Ric Flair. wonder how Flair feels about following a magic show. He probably wanted to do a magic show of his own. I bet he did. <laughs> Hide the snake. Yeah, open up them ropes for me, man. I'd forgotten, you know, Arn Anderson, a little interview that they did on the set. He would always open up an interview with me by going, Tony Giovanni. Which I really appreciated. What's the deal? What? Saying the name Tony Giovanni? Yeah. The more you say it, the more they re- remember it. Oh, so should we start doing that here on the show? We don't have to, it's everywhere. And someone brought up to me that no one said, no one would say, Tony. They would always say Tony Shivani. It was always the whole. Well, that's not sure. Flair patted you on the stomach and said, you're a good looking man, Tony. But before that, he said, Tony Shivani. What's wrong with that? There's nothing. Are you just shut the fuck up? Right. Don't argue with don't don't argue with everything I say, please. Okay. Why are you arguing with everything I say? Okay. Hey, the wrap up shows on the wrestling hotline, Conrad. Okay. What? Okay. Don't say okay. Get into this thing. Here we go. No. One of my favorite places, Jacksonville Memorial Coliseum. No. Hey, are you coming to our show January 1st? No. 
Why? Why would I? Well, it's it's a Daly's place. So it's the it's the homecoming of AEW. So Wednesday, January first, live there. on TNT. I've been there twice. You may not recall. Yeah, that's before I was invited to the party. Yeah. But you were invited to the party. No, yep, not anymore. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know why? You're Conrad fucking Thompson. Not invited. What do you think about Larry Zabisco negotiating with WCW to come in here? Uh, I thought it was tremendous. I was always a big fan of Zabisco's. You guys ran uh, the Omni Thanksgiving night. Drew 10,000 fans. One of your biggest crowds in a long time in Atlanta. Well, the Omni was one of the really Thanksgiving strongholds, you know, the Omni and Georgia championship wrestling, uh, ran the Omni or ran Atlanta Thanksgiving night. Jim Crockett promotions ran Greensboro Thanksgiving night. Whereas by this time we had told Greensboro to take a hike. We're more of a, I, I guess in many fans eyes were not in many old school fans eyes. Is this a valid point? We were more of a Georgia promotion now than we were a Carolina promotion. <laughs> Would you agree with that? I have to agree. Cause I've been told not to disagree for the rest of the program. No, you can disagree. Just don't, you can do You're not disagreeing at all with anything I say. No. Yeah. Come on, please. I said, no, I'm not. I should mention WCW wanted to get in on the desert shield action and they're presenting a shirt that says operation desert shield send sting has a picture of a tank on it. God, what, what is wrong with that? We're getting in on the desert shield action. Guys are, are dying over there. <laughs> and y'all are making shirts. We're making shirts. <laughs> Mighty. But the proceeds went to benefit WCW. Jesus, seriously, we brought, we brought out, we started this show with a, a black guy with face paint on and guys with rebel flags. We had an African elimination match. We've had a magician and we had one, the of the worst match, one of the worst matches ever with, with Sid vicious. And now we want you to you know, sell shirts. And make money off people dying across it. Oh my God. Wade said I had a tank. It really doesn't. It's got a chopper, a, mili- yeah. a, a military helicopter, and it's got what looks like Rambo from behind. It's got Sting in the red, white, and blue paint. Like you saw exclusively at Starcast, Starcast, Starcast. But it does say Operation Desert Shield Send Sting. I'll send it to you in your, in your box of end right now. Oh, you can take a look. Brutal. Oh, Where were God. you on Desert Shield? Did you think you guys should have monetized more uh war tragedies and things like that for personal gain? Of course not. Oh really? For a guy with the yeah. Patreon, you're getting pretty judgmental. Oh, sorry. I said I wouldn't be cantankerous or disagree for the rest of the show. No, we can disagree. Listen, are you going to fucking buy something from Francine's store or not? I might. Well, that'd be nice, but you know what she'd rather have? A custom made arts and crafts project from Nas. Uh, Your boy JR got on the hotline and said, I hope fans do not think that the African match from the Clash of the Champions will be indicative of the tournament on pay-per-view. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, Jim. <laughs> the tournament was shitty as well. It was. 
What are you being mean now? I'm not being mean. Yeah, I'm being you, honest. You you're mean. the one. You're the one that can be mean. When have I been mean to you? Oh, I don't know. Uh, ever since Lois said three, two, one, play. Side examples of main things I've said or done. Well, see now you're 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 playing on the fact that I'm old and I can't remember what was said ten minutes ago. Isn't it true, in fact, that what you perceive as mean, most quote unquote smart wrestling fans would agree is me putting you over? Uh, yeah. You know, just make sure you, just make sure you say my whole name, Tony Shivani. You know, Matt Coon didn't figure that out. His son figured it out first. All the times I would shit on him. Yeah. Well, there you go. We all know that Matt Coon's son is smarter than him. By the way, uh, Matt Coon and his son, uh, are going to be joining us for a no holds bar Christmas. Oh, and I think we're, uh, he's going to take his son to the strip club for the first time. He's pretty excited about it. Wow. It's going to be challenging though. Cause Matthew's only 11, but he's tall. <laughs> so we're going to put on a fake mustache. So we can't get put together. Don't have a fake ID. What we might do is have Silva put him on his shoulders and they'll wear the long inspector gadget trench coat. And when, when you combine his height and Silva's height, there'll be a grown man's height. Yeah. With a big ass. <laughs> <laughs> and Silva's just going to try to pass off the idea as his. Say, Phil, all that food went to your hips. Holy shit. All right. Of course I'm kidding. Matthew's not 11. He's not coming. We're not going to a strip club. It's theater of the mind. It's no holes barred Christmas though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're <laughs> going gonna to get Lois fucked up on some eggnog. <laughs> oh God. I don't know. I think I may be out of town that weekend. I'm not sure. I, I hope to... so. You hope so? Yeah. You don't want me there with all your, uh, Last time you were here with all of them, true or false, you almost died. I almost died. Well, for your health and safety, <laughs> stay away. Yeah. What's been up with our buddy, Jay Z flair, Bojangles champion. I don't hear that much from him. He's getting out of wrestling. I think really, yeah. I invited he and Chelsea to come to Charlotte. Couldn't make it. Nope. I get it. He's, I think he's, uh, I think he's thinking about dumping all the suits, dumping the belt, all the belts and just, the white uh, too. no, I think he wants to keep the white. Like he was a douche long before he was a wrestling fan. Did we do something to him? Did we make him mad? No, there's just been some drama. You know, he had a, a podcast, like 12 people listen to, and I think he may have had a falling out with the co-host or something. I don't know what the deal is. He's just not doing the podcast anymore. And uh -huh. I think, uh, Bojangles might be running its course with him. I don't know. Maybe he's just tired of eating chicken. I don't know. Well, in reality, I just want to see his wife, not him. Well, you can do that. She's selling makeup online. She is. She's doing lots of videos of her putting makeup on herself and J and Jay Z. Really? Yeah. He's got a t-shirt store and I don't know. I think he's just getting burnt out. A lot of negativity on social media. Son of a bitch. And there's just other drama. Well, I get it. I mean, Ellie's a policeman. That's a, that's a high level job. He's an investigator. Oh. Yeah. So when you're seeing people overdose and kids dying and all that stuff, and then you come home and had a fun escape and people turn it negative. Right. What the fuck am I doing this for? Right. I get it. So he's probably just going to like go drink a bunch of vodka and make a shitty homemade pizza and, uh, take 3000 pictures of his wife and send them to all of his friends. Oh man. What a life. I think when are this, okay. So now if, if I recall, uh, 
You know what? I need to get Jay Z some self tanner. Self tanner? Yeah. You mean that bottle shit that you rub on yourself? Yeah. Why don't you just go to one of those salons and spray it on you? Because I want him to look ridiculous, Tony. Too late. Oh, okay. Yeah, these guys are having a pretty good match, although although the fans are not really into it. They really no, are. They, they see Butch Reed as a, a tag team guy and Doom as a viable threat, but at this point, Flair has been positioned so high on the card. Yeah, I understand. You know, I, I didn't realize it back then, but when you go back and you look at it years later, Flair calling the spots are, are very evident, aren't they? Yeah. If Flair's talking to him right now, clapping his hands together right there. Right there. Oh, can I tell you something disgusting that happened over the weekend? Uh, please do. Took to social media, get some feedback on Friday. Well, that's all you need to say. It came out that Dave Silva puts mayonnaise on his grilled cheese. Really? Jesus Christ. That's so fucking disgusting, dude. Why would you even cook mayonnaise? Isn't that bad? Or do you just grill it and then you put mayonnaise on top of it? Whatever it is, it's fucking gross. You know, it'd be worse than putting mayonnaise on grilled cheese. Veganaise on grilled cheese. <laughs> what? Yes. What'd you say? Veganaise. That's not a word. Oh, yeah, it is. Ask Diamond Dallas Page. He loves veganaise. And I told him, I said, what the fuck? I said, man, you're my guru, but I ain't eating that shit. Dude, I don't believe that at all. I'll tell you this. When I take, when I look at this, though, real life, real talk, 2016. Yeah. I think about, you know, we've talked about how many people have passed away in this deal. Yeah. Rick Flair's still with us, dude. Oh, I know he is. Given how hard he was living for so long, who would have predicted, you know, Brian Pillman, Tom Zink, all these dudes. Rick Flair's still with us. Brad Armstrong. Yeah. Uh, and he. There's no question using the uh, wrestling vernacular. He was on death's bed and kicked out, didn't he? So can I get you to make the, make me the beneficiary on your new health IQ insurance? Yes, you can. Cause all I want is that nitro piece that you promised to bring to Nashville last week and didn't. Uh, or the six man belt that you promised seven years ago and haven't uh, either or. All right, I'm coming over to your house tomorrow. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm, I have nothing to do tomorrow. Oh, so I'll just clear my fucking calendar. Uh, yes. It's not like I got anything going on. Yeah. Why tell you? one of your tell one of your fucking minions. Hey, do my job for for like a few hours. I got shit I got to do. That's not the way it works, buddy. Well, let, let me ask you something. You, you moved Dave Silva all the way to Huntsville to do what? What he's what's he fucking doing? Does he, does he do mortgages? No, but he does help with the mortgage company. Yeah, he does. Okay. He does graphics and stuff for me there too. I'll get, I'll guarantee you, Dave has nothing to do tomorrow. Tell him I'm clear my calendar. Shivani and I are going to do some recording and fuck it. You just run. You just, you just sit at my desk and take my messages, answer my emails, boss people around, tell them sell, 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 sell now. Sell, sell a mortgage. Well, you know, here's, here's what, since you've sort of done what you think I do at work, here's what I think you do at work. Oh, Excalibur. This is the greatest match I've ever seen. Jim, what move do you call that? Oh, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, Cody Rhodes. And this is just going to be tremendous. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm contributing nothing to the broadcast. I'm just feigning excitement for shit that I saw him go over six hours ago. And that about sums up my life. 
<laughs> Great work if you can get it. <laughs> well, meanwhile, we put a uh, a bow on this Thanksgiving Thunder bullshit. So what do you say for the show? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm a firm thumbs down. I am too. I didn't like this at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I liked some of the black scorpion shit is like a guilty pleasure. I loved seeing the Steiners, but they didn't have any compelling matches. Like there's just given the talent that we have, we could have done a lot of different stuff that I, you know, it could have been better. We'll just say that. Well, it's just, it, it just seemed, I don't know if Ole Anderson knew that the end was nigh and he just didn't give a shit because there was a not, there was a lot of not giving shit, you know, by Ole Anderson. I, I don't know, but, uh, I, the, the flair, uh, which Reed match was pretty cool. I mean, now Teddy long has got to wear the chauffeur suit and we know an angle came out of that. Um, but overall the Sid thing sucked and star blazer or whatever it is. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. And we're talking about a prime time TV show. I mean, we're, we're talking about matches that probably should have been on WCW Saturday night, but they were put on a prime time clash of the champions, which normally would draw bigger ratings. Do you have the ratings numbers in front of you for that show? Was it true? No. Did Keller come out with that? He didn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so now we see what I came back to. Yeah. I came back to a fucking clusterfuck shit show, shit show, bunch of non-talent. I'm not talking about guys in the ring. I'm talking about guys behind the scenes. I'm talking about I'm Jim heard. Say that again. <laughs> Just like the way you said, I'm talking about I'm talking about. Uh, just, I mean, you know, look, there were a couple of people that knew what the fuck they were doing and you, but, weren't, and you weren't one of them. Well, apparently not. And at the top, you had Jim heard. He didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Uh. You had Jack Patrick, uh, above him. He didn't know what the fuck he was doing. You had uh. Ted Turner above him and he thought everything was going great. Wrestling on TV. That's fine. Turn on the Braves next. Give me some Andy Griffin. Uh. But. We were, we were crashing and burning buddy. Mm. And we were, we were crashing and burning and they, they let uh herd go a couple more years and K Allen fry and then mm. Bill Watts and then the three headed monster and then Eric Bischoff and then Hulk Hogan and the NWO, then, uh, Russo. And then out of business and then Tony Schiavone looking for shit. Tony Schiavone making ends meet. Tony Schiavone finds Conrad Thompson. Tony Schiavone does a podcast. Goes back to work at AEW. Starts making a good living again. Why are, and, why are you talking like this? And then, uh, what is up with this cadence? Sends Francine a hand turkey. Day. What? You're going to do it? No, I'm not. Dude, I'm so excited. She's that would be so win. often, so offensive. It's a Why? funny joke with you and me, but if I actually put my nuts and my dick after manscaping on a piece of paper and trace it and send it to Francine, that would be, that would be horrible. I wouldn't. She would love it, dude. Listen, I don't mean this to sound ugly. I think you know this. Your penis is very non-threatening. <laughs> Thank you. I I'm sure that's the case. You want it like you don't assume it has like a deep voice. It's probably it just giggles, and it's almost like you know the pills very doughboy. I feel like you just kind of touch it, this little doughy little turkey neck, and you, go, you know, so it's like cuddly. I just, you know, she would love it, dude. I will send out hand turkey dicks if I would get Mickey Mouse ears boobs. I will sell that today. Just put your boobs on a piece of paper and trace them and make a Mickey Mouse ear out of it. Like a Mickey Mouse head. You don't think I can sell that? 
Oh, you can sell anything for my locker. I was going to say, buddy. Oh. And you get your shit together because I can sell that. Uh, I'm sure of it. Oh, I know you could. I know you could. I know you could. Well, I mean, are you going to draw it today? No. I do like to say this, and and I think Dave Hancock uh, had a hand in this, Hancock. (laughs) Oh, God. What are you doing right now? Uh, But uh, Whitney Wright being on my birthday video. Oh, God. We've got to get that posted. We need to post that to social media. The world needs to see that. It was a big time high spot. Tell the, tell the truth. How many times have you, uh, <clears throat> to Whitney, right? Uh, countless. I mean, I, I'll never forget the first time you actually saw her perform. Yeah. You called me, I think the next day and you said, buddy, God damn. That girl's talented. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, cause I don't think when you met her, you had seen any of her stuff. Nope. It was nope. after the fact and you're like, now what was her name? And then you threw the Google machine and your life was forever changed. Ooh. And now to know that she knows your name. I don't know if, if you notice this or not, but when we're watching at my birthday party, we're watching the, all these, you know, interviews, happy birthday, Tony Shivani come in. And then all of a sudden it cut to Whit- Whitney Wright laying on the bed. Yeah. I stood up. Everyone in the room looked at Lois thinking this is not good. <laughs> I got it. Well, she doesn't know Whitney Wright is she, and she, well, but she knew when there was a scantily clad girl with, with the thong on and her ass poked up in the air, licking a candle. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was my God who did that. So, and then Medusa saying happy birthday. I mean, too, uh, I might just, be like for somebody who was like, you're mean to me. I feel like that's like the nicest birthday party you probably ever had. It's the greatest birthday party in the history of birthday parties. Well, and that's just not conjecture. That really was your best birthday. And you've had a lot of birthdays. That was your best one. Come on. That was actually, I've had dinner with the kids before, but that was actually my only birthday party I've ever had. And see, you know, Lois has been running around here slacking off for 40 years. I'm friends with you three years. Biggest party yet. Yeah. Yeah. We saved the best for last. We get in the back of uh, the car. Oh my God. Behind uh, the uh, arena in Nashville. We're headed to the comedy show. Of course, in the back are the voices of our childhoods. It's Jim Ross, and Tony, no, Shavon, no. Ron shotgun with me. No. Of course, is no. little, little Dave. So no, no. No. And, no. and Noah Anthony Shivani no. says, boy, no. No. how good luck it is. Insert <laughs> name here. No. And everyone in no. the car says, what? The good news is I get to edit this after. Because we don't talk about women like that in my private life. And I'm like, I cannot believe. And Jr. <laughs> is just as offended. <laughs> and Jr. says, Tony, God damn, how about a little decorum? And you know, if Jr. is trying to rein it in, uh, we're way too far gone. Oh uh, no. You see, here comes a big fucking lie. Right and there. then, and everyone just gets quiet for a minute. And then Tony says, <laughs> and then of course, Jr. being the follow-up play by play man, he is, he says, Tony. And then Tony Schiavone says, oh yeah, yeah, buddy. And Tony, when I look at my clock, I feel like it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen, the black scorpion has brought out his, <laughs> has brought out his leopard and it's eaten Conrad Thompson. Thank fucking God. See you next week on what happened when we're on Westwood one and every Monday. At least until this week, we're on Patron. The Hogan and Nitro, New World Order and the Crow, Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ, Vinnie Mac, Simulcast, Tony's back with Conrad, not your classy podcast, watch a long time not to laugh, Lois rules cat back, this wasn't the initial plan, Tom's a good looking man, Quondike Bill, make a chair, Tommy, come over.